Alright guys, uh, I haven't made a video in a while, uh, which is fine, I've been doing a lot of busy stuff. This video is, this is a very advanced thing that I'm going to show you, but it's very, very helpful if you need to do this. One thing I've been trying to do in this project I'm working on is never, there's a lot of data here, and I never want to write out, you know, name, first name, last name, blah, 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 blah. In fact, I can show you, there's all this information about a, uh, you know about somebody filling out this form obviously but there's another set of this there's a whole another set of information that is applied to the user okay which is my email address so there's a whole set of session data here and there's a whole new set of data here I didn't plan to ever need to interface these two so it didn't matter that the names here were gonna match the names here so so some of the field names here like like uh, name, okay? It, well, this is called agent, but uh, some of these fields collide with some of the fields involved here. And actually, while I'm at it, let me, I could probably pull up the database to show you. So here is all the data that I need to keep for the calendar, and then here's all the data I need to keep for the employee, right? This is all in session because I need to keep track of this. So, what does this all boil down to? If I fill out this form and hit save, and then I get thrown back to this page because of some errors that I, some error checking. Obviously, there's too many time slots taken. I only have a set number of time slots. So the problem is this form would normally be completely blank when I came back here, which is like ridiculous. Why would you have to refill out the entire form? So I'm trying to come up with a good way to do this. And the first thing that comes into my mind is session data. Okay, session data. So using my for each loop in the save file. Normally what I was thinking was, I would grab the uh, underscore session, right? Well, actually, I would grab the underscore post, and then I would actually do, um, I would go underscore session, right? And then I would go key, if I can type the key, and then I would say equal to value, right? And then what I would do is back on the account page, in that form, I would then have to add in here, value equals quote and then I'd have to add in some PHP you know if is set etc I'm not gonna write it all out so I'd have to check if it was set because otherwise I'd get an error and then fill it in for all of them obviously way too much work don't feel like doing that and because the session data for the user collides with the new session data for uh, the calendar I obviously can't do that in the first place so because I'm not using any sensitive information I realized I can pass the information in the URL. Okay, follow me here. Data comes in as post data. I run the for each loop and I create a string, a URL string. Down here, when that error gets set, so there's some error checking here, I go back to the account page, I know that there's an error, and then I add that string onto the end. Okay, that string is all the post variables. So again, sensitive information, don't put it in there. So for me, if you look up in the URL bar, here is all of that non-sensitive information, right? All that information available in the URL bar. This won't work to a certain point because you can only have a certain number of characters in the URL bar, but for what I'm doing, it works just fine. So you come back here, and now your information is in the URL bar. Now, all your information is available as a request, okay? So back in the account page at the very top here, what we can do is actually not in the very top, in the JavaScript, in the jQuery section, we'll open some PHP tags, as you can do PHP inside of JavaScript. You'll do a for each loop for the request variable this time, right? And now here comes the tricky part. I'm going to use jQuery and their selectors, because I know that all the fields are named properly, as in, uh, pick a field here, uh, company, right? Name equals company. There's only one place on this entire form that will be, and I can use jQuery selectors to actually select that. So that's where the magic happens. So we can take a look at this now. I'm going to use echo out the jQuery. It's going to be the uh, in brackets name equals the key, which will be you know uh, company or agent or anything like that. Dot val. And don't forget your quotes, because when this spits out, it needs to be quotes. And then that's going to be equal to the value of the for each loop. And that 
will fill in all of the fields and even select all the boxes for this. And let me just show you what it looks like behind the scenes after it's done created. You can see here, um, obviously this one's not necessary. This is not needed anywhere. There's no name equals error, but thankfully JavaScript ignores that. But these are necessary. For name equals state, the value is Maryland. For name equals agent, the value is Bobby. For name equals app date, the value is this. Okay? And you see it fills it all in for us. Now we have the ability to come back to a form and fill out all the available information without using session data, which sometimes, like in my case, was a problem.